Silver! Hey! A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Come on, Silver! Plump and jovial Jake Benton was sheriff of a little Texas town of Flint Rock. Following his usual habit on a hot summer day, Jake sat with his feet on his littered desk, gazing through the screen door at the little swirls of dust in the middle of Main Street. Jake's daydreaming was suddenly interrupted by the approaching steps of several people. Jake hastily brought his chair and his feet to the floor, adjusted his glasses, and attempted to seem busy as they entered his office. Oh, howdy, folks, howdy. Well, this looks like a committee. What with Miss Arabella and the widow Japes being along? <laughs> As I always say... That Never you... mind what you always say, Sheriff Benton. This is a committee, and we're here to discuss business. You know Banker Sam Tutwaller? Evening to you, Jake. And widow Clarissa Jake. How are you, Sheriff? Fine, Clarissa, fine. Now, Arabella... And my cousin, Clarence Meadows. Hiya, Clarence. Hiya. Uh, <clears throat> I'm fine, Sheriff. Oh, for <clears throat> gosh sakes, Arabella Minters, stop putting on like we was all strangers. Why, I know Clarence and Sam here, and the widow, better than I know myself. Every time you decide to head a committee, you drag them all in like a... A delegation of foreigners and introduce them all over again. Calm down, Jake Benton. I was educated back east, and I know it isn't good to mix friendship with business. Hmm. Tell me, Rod. Well, what'd you come in for? We have a civic problem on our hands, Sheriff. It's up to you to try and settle it. Mm, don't know such things come with my duties as Sheriff, Arabella. What is this here civic problem you're fussing about? You remember old Dave Pickens. Remember him? Well, see here, Arabella, I helped to bury poor old Dave not more than a week ago. I took charge of the auction when we saw... I the... know all that. Well, what about Dave Pickens? Seems to me you let poor Dave rest in peace now that... Jake I... Benton, stop butting in when I... I mean, Sheriff Benton, please don't keep interrupting. Mm -hmm. For a minute, Arabella, you forgot to be educated. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, Sheriff... <laughs> Banker Tutwaller tells me after paying off Dave Pickens' debt that there's about $100 left. Is that right, Banker Tutwaller? That's exactly right, Miss Minters. <laughs> well, Arabella, don't tell me with all your money you're fixing to lay claim to Dave's $100. Now listen to me, you overgrown... <clears throat> I mean, please be serious, Sheriff Benton. 
I'll explain. I wish you would. And hurry it up if you don't mind. Don't be hurrying me, you lazy girl. Bella. 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 Patient, Sheriff Benton, and we'll get on with the discussion. As you probably know, Dave Pickens was expecting his grandchild, a little girl, to come out to live with him. Yeah, that's right. Dave was all excited about that. Too bad. The child is due in Flint Rock tomorrow. Isn't that so, Clarence? <clears throat> yes, Cousin Arabella. <clears throat> we understand she's an orphan, <clears throat> That's Sheriff. right, Cousin Arabella. <clears throat> well, what's wrong with that? I'm an orphan myself, come to think of it. And so are you, Arabella. Don't change the subject, Sheriff. We're not young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is, we're grown and able to look after ourselves. Uh, you managed to get along, Arabella, don't you, Sam? Miss Minters uh, has a... She's modest... the richest person in town. Aren't you, Arabella? Well, I managed to get along comfortably. But to get back to Dave Pickens' grandchild... What about her? I just told you. The little girl is due here tomorrow. Oh, that's so. Mm. We'll have to find some place for her to stay, looks like. Of course, Jake. And I was telling Arabella I'd be glad to take the Clarissa child. Clarissa Jake. And I... I thought we settled that once and for all. You have barely enough for your own keep. Much less having a child like that eating you out of house and home. But, Arabella, there's always enough for one more. And I could get a little more sewing to do. Clarissa? Uh, Miss Arabella's right, will you, Jeeps? The child would be a terrible responsibility for you. Sam Tutwaller, you just keep out of this. Um, I think Cousin Arabella's right, too. Of course I am. Now, I... hold on. Looks like you decided the widowed Japes ain't to have the Pickens girl. Now, maybe you'll tell me who is going to take the little tyke in. Nobody. But nobody? That's right, Sheriff. We want you to arrange to send the child back on the St. Louis stage the following day after she arrives. She can stay overnight at my house. Send her back, you say? But she ain't got anybody left in St. Louis to go back to. We can't send Dave Pickens' grandchild back to fend for herself. And that's for certain. Sheriff, that hundred dollars I spoke of will pay her way back. Meantime, I'll arrange through a friend of mine in St. Louis for the child to enter home there. Who's home? An orphan's institution, of course. I'll pay the small monthly charges connected with her living there. Mm, very kind of you, Belle. Oh, Belle. Oh, 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 dear. Well, uh, Sheriff, Miss Smithers, as we are all accustomed to say, is mighty kind. Oh, oh hogwash. Why, I knew your Miss Minters when she was a hard-riding, hard-talking girl in pigtails. With a kind heart and a big smile for everybody. And darn happy to be called Belle. Then she went east to be educated. Come back to all the family money. Call herself Miss Arabella Minters. Oh, the Belle Minters I knew never come back. Jake Benton, you forget yourself. We came here on business not to talk about the past. We've decided that you should arrange this matter, being as you're the law here. After all, the thing must be done in a legal way. A paper committing the child to the institution and... Permission to use the Pickens' money for her fair back. But, Arabella, after all, she's Dave Pickens' grandchild. As chairman of the Flint Rock Civic Committee, I've given you our decision. That child must return to St. Louis. Come along, Clarissa, Cousin Clarence. <coughs> yes, sir. Water. See you again, <coughs> Sheriff. Jake, I, I know how you feel. I wish I could keep the child, but Arabella's so... so... I know, with the Jibs. Yeah. Arabella Minters is about the meanest woman I ever had to meet. The worst of it is what she says goes here in Flint Rock. It looks like Dave Pickens' grandchild goes back to St. Louis. The following afternoon, a curious crowd gathered in front of a small frame hotel in Flint Rock to await the arrival of the stagecoach. The Flint Rock Civic Committee held a prominent position in the foreground, and nearby, within earshot stood a young boy and a stalwart Indian. That stage is long overdue, Sheriff. Seems to me they could try to keep more on schedule. They ain't got some mighty rugged trails to cover between here and Beaver Run, Arabella. Well, I just can't Dan, such things. who worn with fancy clothes and stony face? Well, that's Miss Minners, Tano. I hear she has a lot of money and just about runs Flint Rock. She looks mean, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Well, here comes Dave now. wonder who's coming. Looks like people are here to meet somebody. Oh, 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 oh,
Wendy. Right. Go down the mail sacks. What took you so long? I ain't good to sleep up on that book, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you a passenger for Flint Rock Driver? Yep. yep. I got a little girl. Come all the way from St. Louis by herself, too. Yeah, I'll open the door for her. All right, little lady, I'll take your bag. I'll have your trunk down from up top in a minute. Thank you. Come, child, what are you waiting for? Get out of the coach. Uh, I'm waiting for someone to help me. Waiting for? Why, I never heard of such I'll a thing. you, little girl. Oh, thank you. I'll take your hand, please. Oh, sure. Yeah. There you are. I know you're kind. I can tell from your voice. My, my voice? For goodness sakes, child, don't stand there. We've come here to meet you. Your grandfather's dead, and we... Grandpa? Dead? Oh. Arabella, how could you? Oh, there, child, everything will be all right. You keep out of this, Clarissa. Girl might as well be told the fact. And what's more, she can't expect everyone here to be handing her out of coaches and waiting on her. She's plenty old enough to take care of herself. I... I'm sorry, ma'am. Now what am I going to do? Do? Oh, we've arranged everything. Uh, by the way, what's your name? Mary Jane Pickens, ma'am. Uh, we'll call you just Mary. Now, Mary, you'll be going back to St. Louis in the morning. Meantime... Going I... back? But I just Yes, got... I've arranged everything. You go to a place where there are lots of other children without folks. A home. No. No other children ask too many questions. They they poke fun at me. Nonsense. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. And for pity's sake, stop staring like that. I, I'm i sorry, ma'am. But I can't help it. You see, I... I'm blind. Oh, God. Oh, it's all right. I've always been blind all my life. I don't mind, really. <clears throat> well, that's too bad, of course, child. But we'll see that you're taken care of back in St. Louis. Come along now. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye, uh, uh, boy. My name's Dan Reed. Goodbye, Mary Jane. Tonto, she's blind. Oh, me here, Dan. That plenty bad. And that woman wants to send her back to St. Louis all alone. It isn't right. No. We not able to interfere, Dan. No, I I guess not. Golly, I feel sorry for her. Oh, me no. Me no. And better we go back to camp now. Is it Victor? Steady, boy. <clears> Home <throat> Ranger. Wonder what keep us so long, maybe. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Victor. He's not here, Tonto. No. Campfire out. Him gone some time. Steady, Victor. Steady, boy. Victor, hear something. I hear it, too. Ah. Lone Ranger come now. And him ride plenty fast. Oh, sir. Oh, boy. Whoa, steady. Oh, you keep it coming. Damn, Tonto. I'm glad you're here. We were in town when the stage came in. Dan, we haven't time to talk much right now. We have some hard riding to do. What matter? Tonto, you must have noticed the haze in the air. Ah. Me wonder if... I uh... wondered, too. I went westward to investigate. We've had a long, dry spell, and what I feared has happened. What? Fire, Dan. The plains to the west are a roaring mass of flames about five miles away. Oh, that bad. Golly. The wind is shifting. If that fire moves eastward this way, it'll engulf the town of Flint Rock and wipe out the ranches beyond it. Oh, golly. Can anything be done? Well, there are no ranches between the fire and Flint Rock. There are many east of the town. Tonto, uh -huh. Dan and I'll ride into Flint Rock to warn them. You can go on to the ranches. Get all the men you can and bring them to town. Ah, me do it. We get plenty of help from them, combined with the men in town. We'll do what we can to turn the fire back. Do you think it can be done? If it isn't done, Flint Rock will be burned off the map and all the ranches beyond it destroyed. We'll have to move fast. Come on, Get along, Victor! Down. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Unaware of the approaching menace to their small town, Sheriff Jake Benton and the members of the so-called Civic Committee were having a discussion at Arabella Minter's home, a pretentious frame dwelling about a mile west of Flint Rock. Well, Arabella, there's the paper you wanted, saying they should take the little Pickens girl into that uh, place you're fixing to send her to. It's all for the best, Sheriff. Uh, Arabella, I-, I still think it's a dreadful thing. That poor child, alone and blind like she is. If only Clarissa, I could say it. it's all settled. So there's no use talking about it. Uh, where's the child now, Miss Minters? In the back bedroom. Oh, Somebody stopping outside. Open the door, Clarence, and see who it is. Just well, hurry, Clarence, before they knock the house yes, down. I was told the sheriff was here. Oh, yes, he... Oh, oh Cousin Arabella, it's a mass top What on earth is... I've got to see the sheriff. Come on, Dad. Oh, right. It's a whole... No, uh, hold everything, folks. The masked man's a friend of mine. Jake Benton, what's a sheriff doing? Quiet, everybody. There's no time for explanations. We came to warn you. The whole town of Flint Rock's in extreme danger. Now, hold hold on. Let him talk. There's a wall of fire moving this way a few miles to the west. The wind is turning and is blowing stronger every minute. We'll be wiped out. Land sakes, what can we do? Sheriff Benton, this may be some trick. I still think it's strange. See for yourself through the open door there. Hey, Jupiter, he's right. Oh, I can see a smoky haze over that grove of trees, John. Well, of course he's right. He wouldn't have wasted time coming here otherwise. Well, what can be done to stop it? Now, listen to me, all of you. We sent for the ranchers to go into town. All of you must start for Flint Rock at once. We'll fight the fire from there by starting a big backfire. Now, just a minute, stranger. This house is one mile from Flint Rock. It stands between that fire and the town. Well? I'm not going to let my home go up in smoke. Start the backfire right from here. It won't work. That cottonwood grove on the hill over there with the gully just beyond would break the backdraft, causing any backfire we might start here to blow back to the house. He's right, Arabella. Now listen to me, stranger. Do you mean I to mean say... to say that the mile between here and Flint Rock is all level plain, perfect for a backfire. You'll have to sacrifice your house to save the town. If it hits Flint Rock in the bank, Miss Minters, you'll lose a great deal more. We'll do what our masked friend says. Let's get started for Flint Rock right now. Here, here, come on. Well, if it must be that way, all right. Go on, Clarissa. You ride with Banker Tutwaller. Go along, Clarence. Yes, what about you? I want to get a few trinkets together. Then I'll follow in the buckboard. It's hitched outside. Well, little Pickens girl, where is she? Little girl, Dan. Yes, yes, there's a little girl here. I'll wake her up and bring her along with me. The rest of you go along. Hurry. Yes, we've wasted enough time already. Come on, Dan. Yes, sir. Come along, everybody. Get a move on. We're right on ahead. Come on, Silver. Come on, Victor. So they think they can scare Arabella Minters into leaving the finest house around here. Arabella Minters went outside and, making a torch of tall, dry brush, moved a short distance from the house into the tall, dry grass. Hastily, she moved from one spot to another, setting small patches of fire which gradually merged into one flaming line. Then she withdrew toward the front of the house to watch. There. I'll show them how wrong they are. That backfire's leaping high already, and soon it'll... No. No, it can't be. The light of fire I started is leaping right toward the house. Oh, little girl. I'll get her and we'll drive to town. Oh, my ankle. The horses with the buckboard. Whoa! Come back! Whoa! You stay gone. Oh. Is something the matter? Did you call? Yes, child, yes. I... How can you help when you can't even see? I... I'll do what I can. Well, move this way a few steps. There. Now, help me out. I've sprained my ankle. Oh, here. Let me take your arm. Easy. <clears throat> can't even step on it. I hear fire. Yes, yes, there's fire, child. And we're practically helpless. There's a wall of fire moving this way. Soon one will come the other way. I... Tarnation, take it. I'm talking like a fool. Scaring the daylights out of a child. I'm not afraid, Miss Minters. Stop that Miss Minters stuff. I'm sick of it. You call me Aunt Arabella or something. Now, Mary Jane, what are we going to do? Well, I heard once of people lying down in water to... Save them from a big fire. If there was only some water... Jumping, around... catfish, maybe we can do something. There's a creek off to the left a short distance. You help me. I'll direct the way. 
All right. Let's get started, then. The water in that creek's only about two feet deep, but it might save us if we can get there. Trapped on both sides, Mary Jane. All we can do is hope for the best. A short time after reaching Flint Rock, the Lone Ranger organized the ranchers and townsmen along the west edge of the town. Many were plowing long furrows in an ever-widening path in case the backfire which was to be started should fail. Others were placed a hundred feet apart in a quarter-mile line before the town, each bearing a lighted torch and each waiting for the signal to start the great backfire. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode about giving orders to the men, Dan Reed sat on his horse, Victor, watching from the west end of Main Street. He turned in the saddle as a buckboard approached hurriedly and stopped. Oh, 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 boy, where's that masked man? He was over there a few minutes ago. I think he's riding out to give the signal for the backfire. Oh, Clarence, we have to do something. I know, Clarissa, it's terrible. What's wrong? Arabella Mendes and the little blind girl, they haven't come into town. You mean they're still out there? Yes, well, they may have started in, but the backfire will stop. Not the backfire! Not the backfire! Oh, Clarence, they're lighting the backfire. It's too late, Clarissa. It's too late. I can still get through. Come on, Victor. Oh, wait. Come back. Oh, oh Clarence, he's gone out between the oh. fires. He'll be trapped. Oh, dear. We'll tell the masked man. Get him. Come on, get him. Whoa. Whoa, boy. Masked man. Masked man. What's the matter? The boy. The one on the white horse. What's happened to him? Here. He's gone. Gone through the back fire to reach the little blind girl there. House. Dan, gone to. He'll be trapped with the fires. Hello, hello. What matter? Dan, he's gone between the fires. Take charge. I'm going after him. Oh, you're not back it now, Kimasabi. Wall of fire too great. I have to make it. I'll ride around the south end. Adios, Kimasabi. One silver. Gradually, Silver bore the Lone Ranger farther ahead of the backfire. Already the threatening red glare and the billowing smoke of the approaching main fire could be seen before them. Then the Lone Ranger saw Dan outlined on Victor against the glow. Steadily and surely, Silver overtook them. Dan! 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 I can't stop now! I have to go on! The little blind girl! We'll be on together, Dan! One Silver! Come on, Victor! <laughs> Look, the house, it's burned down. Yes, that's strange. The big fire is still a quarter of a mile away. It's just reached that grove of cottonwoods. Anyhow, it's burned down, and and that means... Oh, golly, that little girl, she... Listen, Dan. I thought I heard... Wait. Dan, those were cries for help. Come on, over that way. Come on, on, Silver. Come on, on, boy. Look, a creek. And Miss Minners is there with a little blind girl. Oh, 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 oh. That boy, Dan Reed. Steady, steady, Silver. We saw your house in ruins. Oh, due to my pig-headedness, I set a backfire that really backfired. Sprained my ankle, couldn't walk. Mary Jane's blind, so we had to stick here. The big fire's moving in fast. We'll have to leave. We have the backfire we started near town to go through. I don't see how we're going to get through. It's a trap that's... There's a way, past. Dan. A slim chance we'll have to take it. Mary Jane will ride with you. Miss Miller's with me. Then we'll follow this creek back toward Flint Rock. Shallow enough for the horses. All right, Dan, you help Mary Jane. I'll help Miss Mitters. We're going to get through. We haven't a moment to lose. Following the creek bed, the Lone Ranger and Dan carried the little girl and the frightened spinster to safety. Later, Arabella and Mary Jane were the center of a small group in Clarissa Jape's little home. The Lone Ranger and Dan turned to leave when Arabella spoke. Don't leave just yet, stranger. I want you and the boy to hear what I got to say. We'll stay only a minute. We have a friend waiting outside, Miss Minders. Oh, Arabella, it must have been terrible for you. Best thing ever happened to me, Clarissa. Uh, You're forgetting to be a lady, Arabella. I'm plain belle to you, Jake. That lady you're talking of, Arabella by name, got smothered back there in the fire. Uh, Miss Minders, I don't understand... Shut up, Sam. Now, Jane... I always wanted to have a little girl around, but, well, I wouldn't admit it. 
We'll stay here with Clarissa till I build a nice new house, and then you'll be my little girl. How about it? <clears throat> but, uh, Cousin Arabella... Can't you no good boot shining gopher? Oh, Go oh. get yourself a job. Oh, and don't dear. come whining around me again until you do. Yes, Cousin Arabella. <clears throat> well, Mary Jane? But... But I'm blind oh, No, child. You're not the one who's been blind. I was. Trying to put on airs. Be what I wasn't. Watching my language all the time. Forgetting my manners. I need you, Mary Jane. I think you ought to accept Mary Jane. I think so, too. Oh, then I do accept, Aunt Belle. Will I declare? I uh, think... Shut uh, up, Sam, or I'll take out my money and ruin your bank. Jake, remember what you said? I reckon I couldn't forget it, Belle. Well, that hard-riding, hard-talking girl in pigtails is back, Jake. Back to stay. Come often and see if it's the bell you used to know. Arabella, you're being downright forward with Jake. Right before Mary Jane, too. Come, Dad. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of Mary Jane, it seems to me she perks up every time a certain nice boy comes around. Hmm. Well, the masked man and Dan just left, Bill. Uh, Jake, who is that masked man? Do you really know? I did want to... Well, thank him and Danny. Well, they got their thanks. I saw it in their eyes when you asked Mary Jane to stay with you. Lone Ranger loves children, Bell. He, he sort of believes like it says in the good book. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. The Lone Ranger. I'll always remember him. Always. have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 